World famous entrepreneur and philanthropist Tony Robbins has a new book out. It is called, I was going to hold it up. They got a graphic. It's called <laughs> The Holy Grail of Investing. It is written with world class investor Christopher Zook. And it lays out seven unique strategies that have great, created amazing returns over long periods of time. And in the book, Robbins speaks with business and investing legends like Bill Ford, billionaires Barry Sternlich, Robert Smith, Will Van Lowe, and many more. He's also been coaching hedge fund legend Paul Tudor Jones for over 20 years. We are pleased to have Tony Robbins on set. Not sure who convinced you to schlep out to New Jersey. <laughs> Tony, we appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me. Good to me see you again. Great Thank you very you much. Too. Why the book? Why now? Well, it's interesting. This is the third in my trilogy, and I wasn't planning on doing a third one, but I had the privilege. Well, if you're going to do a trilogy, you would need a third one. <laughs> I wasn't counting on a third one. But I had the chance to interview 13 of kind of the masters in the universe, the masters of private equity, who, you know, $20 billion to $100 billion firms but they're actually producing 20% compounded for decades, some of them 30%. And as you well know, for decades, you know, private institutions, big institutions, pension funds, ultra wealthy people have had access, but the general public has not had access, and most of them don't even understand the impact. For example, in the S&P 500 for the last 35 years, we know we've compounded at 9.2%. It's pretty darn good. You're doubling your money about every eight years. But you've got 14.2%, not with these guys, with average private equity. Mm. So imagine getting 50% more per year compounded for decades. So as an example, if you had a million bucks and you put it aside in the S&P 35 years ago, forgot about it, it's worth 26 million. Take the same million, same 35 years, put in private equity, average private equity, it's $139 million. <sighs> so the ability to get much higher returns with less risk, which is what Ray Dalio's part of this book is about, is understanding the math of how to do that. And there's some new rules that make it accessible for people that are general investors. It's come, it's come down, but let's be clear. Let's be, yes. And you make this point in the book, by the way, which yes. is the private markets are now where the real money is going. Not to disrespect any of our audience and listeners out there that is going in the stock market. I'd take the $26 million on a million any day <laughs> and twice on Sunday, so Tony. most of us. <laughs> but the big, big money is now in the private capital markets. Right. But are the, they become more accessible, but are they accessible? Yeah, well, that, those are two good questions. So the first one is the rules have changed. Oh, they're beginning to change. Right now, it used to be 1% of the population could get access as an accredited investor, for example. Million-dollar net worth not counting their house, as most of your investors know. 200000 income, 300000 for a couple. Today, it's 20% of households. But what's really cool is that I always said, why is it the richest people in the world get the greatest assets and the average person who needs it the most don't? Mm. Well, the House uh, decided in Congress that they agreed and they passed a bipartisan bill that says you can take a test now because you could have inherited your money. You could be a good businessman, but not a good investor. You take a test and then you'd be accredited. You don't need a million dollars. So the Senate's now taking it up. It looks bipartisan there as well. It should be there. So that's number one. But number two is... By the way, I love that because the term accredited, which I've said about a billion times in 20 years, should not just be because grandpa invented the seatbelt. Exactly right. Maybe you're a ding-dong. No matter how much money you have, if you know the risks, understand what you're doing, you're accredited. And what's interesting is in private equity, you could argue there's less risk for all those because they hold your money for a period of time. When the stock market's going up and down, they don't have to sell. You know, you're usually tied up for five years or 10 years, so you still need liquidity in public markets. But the high-end ultra net worth have 46% of the money in alternative investments, only 29 in the markets. That ought to tell you something, right? It's the kinds of returns. But the other one you bring up is really important. Can you get access? Because the best guys in the world, their funds get closed so quick. It's like trying to buy a brand new Ferrari. They've already sold them all mm -hmm. to the Ferrari owners, right? Well, what's really interesting is I was lamenting about this, and I've got a certain amount of access because of my reputation and my brand and people I know, but I get little slivers. And I was saying to this friend of mine who used to work for Paul Tudor, he said, uh, I said, you know, it's just it's getting these small pieces. It doesn't make that big a difference. He said, don't you help me so much? I got to tell you something. He said, I want to tell you where I put most of my money. And this guy's very successful, so I'm leaning in, you know. Yeah. And he says, there's this company in Houston, Texas called Chasm. He said, Houston, Texas. I said, wait a sec, not Singapore, London, New York. He goes, no. They're outside the bubble, and here's what they've done. You don't have to fight to get into these funds anymore. You can actually purchase the fund, the companies themselves. You can become a general partner. As you know, you're a limited partner when you're an investor in one of these funds. But you are like the CEO, the CFO, and they make 2% whether they make you money or not, and they make 20% of the upside, and people give that because of the amazing returns. Well, now you get the 2 and 20. It's pretty extraordinary. So I own 65 different firms, some of the biggest in the world now that I'm a partner in in that area. And anyone can start to do this. Another one's private credit. Brian, most of us know that the banks have tightened up massively since 2008, and even more so with these recent regional banks. And so what's happened is private equity firms that are really smart at learning how to value companies and how they run, 
they started loaning to them. They became the alternative to the banks. And, you know, if you have a mortgage and it was fixed right now, you're happy you're still at 3%. But with interest rates jacked up, if you didn't, you might be paying 7 or 8, two or three times what you're doing. Well, they're floating rates for these loans. So I can remember in 2021 when people were trying to get nothing from their, their returns on, on bonds and they go get 3.9% on junk bonds, big risks. We were getting 9% in private credit. And they have a 1% failure rate, which Amazing. banks would die for. 